Hello everyone, this is Dennis, VE1XT, here again with another video on Log4Ohm, the uh, logging program that I've been using for the last uh, probably couple of years now or so. In my previous video I gave you a brief, well maybe not so brief, overview of the configuration and some of the options available in the application. Today I wanted to talk specifically about one option which, or one feature which uh, I've been starting to play with a little bit, which is the uh, real-time log generation. Um, so basically the application can take a snapshot of your database, export it, and create a web page that you can view in a browser to either display locally on your computer if you just want to look, or you could upload it to your website and make it available to the public, that sort of thing. So built into Log4Ohm is uh, a web page generator that looks like this. Um, well, here's what the output looks like, and it uh, you can configure it in various ways. Um, I have mine configured currently to export the last 50 QSOs, and this is kind of the default template that you would see. So I'll show you quickly here how we can go about setting that up. Uh, under the settings menu, options, and then uh, from this main page on your active profile, you select web page, and here we can see some different settings here that we use. Um, the main one we need to enable is enable web web page generation. So we put a check mark in here and we'll have to click on this load default source button. And what that'll do is that loads the default template that it will use. Um, if you're, you know, if you know some HTML coding or, you know, you're a programmer or anything like that, you could easily create your own template and design it to look exactly how you want. Um, for this demonstration and for my lack of doing anything with HTML in recent years, um, we'll just use the standard one. Um, so there's two parts to this. There's enabling the web page generation, which you have to do to start off. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to select an output folder. Uh, this will be where it will dump the, uh, the file. Now for for this particular part of it, um, I just created a www folder on my desktop and I named the file log.html. And you can tell it how often you want it to refresh. Um, for the sake of this video, I've set it to every minute. And then uh, I've also set it to export my last 50 QSOs. So what we get from that side of the screen is a file like this here, um, log.html. And we will go ahead and open it in Google Chrome. And here is what we have. Now this is the file. You can see it's on my local computer. And it just shows you a list of the latest QSOs that we have. Now the other side, the other feature to this is that you can enable FTP upload. Now for this example, I have an FTP server running locally, uh, FileZilla server here on my on my desktop. Um, mainly because uh, this application currently only supports the uh, upload of a standard FTP to a standard FTP site. Um, my web host currently uh, requires that uh, I use SFTP, Secure FTP. So just to demonstrate, um, I've set this little FTP server up on my computer here and uh, we've selected Enable FTP Upload. Um, the IP address 127001 is the local IP address of this machine, the loopback address. Uh, I'm running it on standard port 21. Now these are the things that would probably change depending on um, where you're sending it to. Uh, it definitely probably wouldn't be a local. You probably have the either the, the domain name of the uh, website you're sending it to or an IP address of that website. And generally, in the open internet, it's not always a good thing to run uh, an FTP server on port 21. Um, but for this demonstration, that's what we'll use. Remote folder, that's basically just telling the FTP part of this program where to put the file. And the remote file name is what you want to call the file. And here I've just named it live underscore log dot HTML. And of course, we need an FTP username and FTP password. So once you have all that set up, um, you'll be generating, in this case, we'll be generating the file in this www folder on my desktop. And we also uh, have this live log file, which um, runs under my web server here. 
So, um, and then once you've added these changes, you'll want to go ahead and click save. And just to demonstrate how this works, uh, I'm going to add another QSO to my database here. So I'm going to set it up uh, with my alternate call sign VU on DCD. And uh, just as a side note, you can see how it automatically filled in my name there. And that's due to having this particular instance of log for ohm connected to QRZ.com, uh, which in my original or my previous video, I didn't have that um, at the time. So, and we'll just say we made a 20 meter contact with myself on 14300. We'll click add. That goes ahead and adds it to the database. We can see here that we now have this in the list of recent QSOs. And uh, since I have the web page generation set to, to refresh every minute, uh, it shouldn't take very long before it shows up in here. Now, this is the log file that is on my local computer. We do a refresh, so it's not there yet. That's because um, we just kind of missed the interval. So once we refresh again now, here we see the new QSO with VU1DCD is on the web page. And that's the QSO that I just logged in my application. And alternatively, if we go to the simulated web page here and refresh, we also see that we uploaded the file to the web page. And when we refresh, we see the new QSO added. And also, if you look in the folders, you can see the timestamp was added 5.16 p.m., 5.16. And same thing here. So it generates both the local file and the FTP file at the same time. And that shouldn't be much of a problem. Um, I currently have it set so that I'm only exporting my latest 50 QSOs. Um, you could set it to do 100, 150, or as many as you want. It just the, long, the more you have, the longer it takes for that process to kind of go from start to finish and upload the file so um, but this is really meant to be a real-time log so it's just you know you go to the page you refresh it you see what QSOs I've been making over the past you know X amount of time and as you can see I don't uh, I'm not that active on HF at this point uh, however I do try to make contacts every few days when I can so for now that's uh, pretty much it um, there's not much more to it. Uh, you can play around with it. You can get the file generated. Um, if you're like me, where your web host needs uh, an SFTP connection, then maybe you could use uh, the FileZilla FTP application to automatically um, schedule an upload so you could output it to a file on your computer and then use FileZilla to make an SFTP connection and then upload it every so often there as well. Um, but anyways, thank you very much for watching and uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up if you want, if you like the video and uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you very much and 73.